truth about FF15 versus 13. What's good, my fellow peasants? By Joe. How have you all been? I'm feeling absolutely fantastic, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, it's so good to be back uh, and recording videos. But what video to come back to? Versus 13. Why are we still talking about that, Pez? Why is anyone still talking about that? It's old as hell. Even 15 itself has been out over a year at this point. <laughs> At this point, it seems pretty clear we're never really going to ever hear anything official about what happened in the Versus days. Uh, and indeed, does anyone care? Well, I do. I still do. I find it just interesting uh, because this is a leak that's come out on Mog Central. Now, in terms of the validity of it, it is the same as anything, really. Uh, you can never be, until it, unless it's coming out the horse's mouth, Tabitha's Nomura, someone from Square Enix. You can't be sure, but the thing I like about this is it sounds, it sounds like, even if it's made up, uh, I love the ideas, I love the concepts they're talking about, uh, and it definitely seems like it has some sound logic to it. It's one of the most logical I've heard, and indeed, uh, so this was Takeshi Sendo. Supposedly, Takeshi here has spoken to somebody else who a Mognet Central um, forum, a, a site member, a uh, site staff moderator like Leon Blade, uh, they've said, I can verify that OP was in contact with a source that may have given him credible information. But the information that OP relayed here, of course, isn't going to be uh, verbatim. So it isn't going to be a thousand percent. I mean, I don't know what the validity of the Mognet Central uh, site staff are, but I'm sure they've got some connections. They've been around a while. So let's just jump straight into it. I've got to say some of the grammar and spelling is very bad, but I'm tired of people making bullshit. So this is point number one. I like how you're opening Takeshi. You're coming in hard. Uh, I'm tired of people making bullshit. Companies hiding things that they did wrong and people that just no question, uh, no question anything or in oppose because of that they do not believe anything even if that is true. I'm going to try to correct some of the spelling um, here, but anyway, I have this information, uh, keep it so long ago, and when I hear from Square Enix saying that versus 30, I mean, I've got to say this might be the, not be the person's native language. I really don't care, I'm just interested from a purely conceptual stage. When I hear from Square Enix saying that versus 13, 15, uh, was something Nomura never finished or Tabata saying it was just an unfinished concept, something inside of me is burning. Three, because of the destiny, I came here and read about some data that was the spark, the signal that I have to release all I know. Uh, so let's start. I will try to be as fast as possible, and a big part of that could say I'm talking for Nomura's team. We'll get into this later, and somebody in the comment section will say it, but I really do believe that either the Nomura Tabata teams thing, sort of the rivalry between them. It could be something that's in a complete projection of the fan base. I really think it could be something that we as fans, we're just fabricating and there wasn't really this deep rivalry. But then another side of me does think there were times where people from Tabitha seemed that they said that they didn't want to ever work with Nomura again, that there was some tensions. Nomura wasn't happy with stuff and Tabitha wasn't happy with stuff. And I think that regardless, I just can't really see, you know, Nomura and Tabitha, two guys who've been doing this for a long time. You know, they're both smart men, mature men. I don't really see them like playing to this whole sort of team childish antics. You know, that's their gang on the playground and this is our part of the playground. I don't ever think, oh, I should hope it didn't get that childish. But I think logically speaking, this is a piece of uh, you know, creative content where people's heart, souls, concepts, they would have built characters off of their own imagination and then have someone else change it. And have somebody else like change their vision or do things that, you know, you felt took away the heart and soul and essence of what you originally made. I could really see that happening. More into that later on because it is one of the points. So the first, the verses you always dreamed, brackets me included, was just our perception of that teasers and concepts they were releasing. The reality is that versus 13 you wanted is what you get but what they compiled in one game when they had to cut so much things to restructure everything to get it in one game now we did hear about this we did hear that originally it was going to be a trilogy this was going to be three games that they blew up the story to the size of three then they had to recondense it i can believe that i can also believe that a lot of what we saw versus because that you know, even tabata came out and said that it was only 25 percent done which i still think is a considerable enough chunk to be considered enough groundwork like you know what i mean like the the story the base 
voices, the characters, their, their base designs. You know, it's, it, Nomura laid enough groundwork to feel invested in this project, but whether or not what Tabitha said is true, that it was just this crazy ball of mess and that it just flipped from concept to concept to concept, I really think that was the case because even Robert, uh, Roberto Ferrari, the artist, and there's the thing about Roberto, he's been through this process from start to finish. He's been across both directors and he said that shit was getting changed every three months. He told us that back in 2013. Every three months, they were changing the concepts. It was a mess. We heard things like it's considering being scrapped because the project had just lost direction. It didn't really have any clear vision. So, so I don't think all of that can be untrue. So restructured to get everything in one game. The main core and tone for the story was always the same. Always the same. Uh, blame that teasers uh, for what we created. The game was always meant to be a journey with his friends for recovering the crystal. The nights get longer, the darkness itself. Demons and experiments were always the core of the story in Versus 13. The saga was going to have three games and the original idea was finishing it in 2020 to 2021. <sighs> I can see that. I can see that 15 was very much still trying to keep the same kind of tone and atmosphere. Um, what I definitely think it looks like they did is the earlier parts of the journey were made much brighter. Ignis should take it and never let go. It helps that he can keep four eyes on the dash. <laughs> I couldn't even keep one way less depressing because that's the thing with verses i think the tone it would have been logically thinking about it what the tone was like at the end of 15. so if after the 10 years after the dark world i think that would have just started way way earlier because you think noctus originally in verses he was going to lose his regis he was going to die at the start he was going to see his hometown destroyed he was going to have that active fight in his city getting out the game was going to be gripped and balls to the walls from the start and when they did away with that and they made the road trip you no know, this fishing experience going out seeing the sights prompto and gladiolas giving each other's noogies in the tent and ignis getting his glasses stolen by chocobos and gladiolas finding the ultimate cup noodle experience uh, all of that i could imagine was very much a tone we were never gonna get in verses never because again there would have been no place for that and it kind of is interesting that we recently had a leak come out um oh, not a leak this was actually an interview from tabitha saying that they cut certain really dark parts at the start actually saying that i think i've saved it in one of these folders i have a lot of shit in my folders <laughs> a lot of shit here it is yes this um number 16 noctus was originally going to have a bachelor party for his wedding in golden key but because of tabitha it was deemed that it'd be hard to actually relax under the circumstances and was cut see this is what doesn't make sense a lot of people picked real holes in that point because there still was stuff like that there was still fishing there was still really light-hearted banter there were times where the guy seemed way too relaxed and that was even after insomnia had fallen and regis had died and noctus had become an orphan so the idea of the tone uh, being the similar between verses and 15 i can very much believe if we're talking about the really dark aspect the end aspects but i think the tone kind of got a bit distorted with final fantasy 15 and actually personally i reckon tab to you should have gone what Nomura would have done which he would have gone full dark balls to the walls out the gate like straight out the gate he would have gone in with some depressing ass shit and I, I remember hearing Stella dying was one of those um, one of those things before the insomnia evasion bit I did like she was going to die right at the start but that's just me personally I, I like my dark story type 0 is my favourite a lot of people don't like their fan faces that depressing let's continue on so please forget about the FF versus 15 or whatever it's totally fake um <laughs> This is where I actually now start getting a bit of credibility. And he continues this on. Uh, if this was just like a blind versus 13 fanboy, like any of the kind previously we've seen who have like been making up rumors, they very much, the one thing they've been pushing is that versus 15 is happening. It's coming back. There's rumors of it. And I haven't believed that once. I really don't see Versus 15 ever being a thing. And uh, for uh, very obvious reasons. They're not going to undermine their character Luna. They're not going to undermine what has essentially been a very successful game for Square Enix. If you've seen their share price and you think that Versus uh, Final Fantasy 15 has been bad for Square or been a failure. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah, man. They made some dollar uh, man this is gonna take me ages if i don't stop rambling it's just that i could really see this being my last ever versus video and uh, this has been like a 12 year fucking journey so whew, i want to talk in some depth there so for one last time let's bust up these points of the changes what were they uh so things uh there were so many things they had to cut reconvert and even fuse to try to maintain as many things as they could and we did heard, hear this from tabitha he said that coming on in 2013 he very much tried to keep a lot of the structure the story the plot tried 
to keep as much of it, but as time went on, that kind of tone really dropped off. And I think that that's kind of what happens when you start actually refining this into a real product. It, it, it changed so much, and I've even just done a summons rant, which hopefully that video comes out soon. <laughs> I'm trying to be really positive in this one because that video, that's a doozy of a rant. And even in the video, you'll hear me say the same thing. This project has been met, bent, manipulated, twisted, evolved, changed. Concepts have been spluted together. Um, and the first one is Etro was changed, not by Tabitha's team. That was a company decision because since it was a number title, they did not want to preserve an entity. She barely appeared in the story until the very end. That was related to the death and sacrifice of people. The ring was originally from Etro. That's why they created the old king to substitute her or should I created since they did exist uh, but I had other role they simply assumed the Etro's role because of the company now this first point I can I can easily believe and somebody even posted a picture and I don't know where this is from it kind of looks like the latest Assassin's Creed game, but like, I, I don't know the source. What, what is the source of this? Someone put this in the comment section, um, but that's why I can believe this. The reason why I've always believed Etro was either the deity or the founding deity of the Lucis household was because the Lucis household were very much uh, looking to be a family of death. All of their logos, I mean, just look at their logo. Literal skull, wing goddess, who is the goddess of death. It's just so clear to me that Etro was going to be a thing, um, and that ring, the ring idea coming from her, totally makes sense, and that the Lucii were in some way her servants, or like they said here, she actually dies, and they are taking over her role. But number two, Stella! Stella! <laughs> she was just the plot device for Noctus and other characters, the misogynistic bastards it seems the women were never gonna catch a break and that's the funny thing a lot of people thought that luna was a bit of a doorstep um for noctus and a plot device um i think that's the main thing between stella and luna where stella seemed like this really independent badass strong female she kind of stands up against him she has her own sword i think that's what what drew people to stella but we don't we have no idea we have no clue if that's actually how it went down and like like it says here she dies early in the story and like luna they never ever see each other again after the party luna is in fact respected i think it's supposed to say represented a lot of stella more than you think the thing is when she dies i was not told how is when it comes into the story the next change or in this case omission so yeah this goes back to a rumor i heard a good six maybe even more than six months ago that stella was going to die in one of the opening acts um the difference being she was still going to appear to him throughout the story as a ghost um we can definitely see that concept has survived through so i can't really see that being bs considering luna appears multiple times to noctis as a ghost even in the uh, episode ignis dlc she appears uh, whether stella would be the same as luna the fact that she couldn't interact or communicate with the realm of the living being that it's namura and noctis was falling asleep a lot more back in the day i could really see it being the case that they was going to have dream interactions noctis was going to go they was going to meet up so while i get what this point and what i've heard other fans saying that oh there's no reason why you should have wanted Stella over Luna. They were both going to die and play the same role. I kind of think that Stella would have had a bit more of a role because this is Nomura and he sets up those kind of trippy scenarios uh, and they kind of tried to set it up into uh, Final Fantasy 15, but it didn't... I know, it didn't really stick. Like, any of Luna's ghost moments, she just seemed to be uh, like a vision. It's kind of when they see them in the far plane in FF10. You know, Chapu, he, he can't do anything, he can't talk. There's no character development going on, whereas I could see Namura would have been way more free with it. So number three, the world of dreams. That's a part of the narrative where Noctus could talk with certain characters, such as Regis and Stella through his dreams. The point of that was Noctus was to question himself about what was real or a dream. Oh man, this has got Nomura just... <laughs> all over it um or a dream while they were supporting him he was able to talk to dead people the eyes that see the light of waning souls yeah 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 while he was sleeping and stella was a constant until the end was he dreaming all the time what is really real that was part of the versus magic that got lost and was so important for namura tabitha wanted to simplify the story to its limits remove almost completely because they considered it so convoluting and nonsense since they wanted a non-complicated linear story Yep, yep, yep. Believe every single word. Uh, no, I mean, th there's nothing not to believe. Tabata himself said he wanted to simplify the story. And Nomura, if you just look at the Kingdom Hearts franchise, just look. There is no way 
that if Nomura was still in control, that they wouldn't have gone down this kind of complex and, yeah, potentially convoluted for some uh, plot devices. Uh, and, and this is all Nomura all over. And I really like this point because it kind of highlights what I think not many people are considering is just the creative differences between the two directors. They both have their distinct styles and the fantasy elements that they like to dive into. And Nomura for a long time, I mean, he's been savouring and he just loves the whole dreams meet reality, the blurs and the lines between and mixing it up and questioning everything what's real what's not real and putting the protagonist through real existential crisis or, or reality crisis whereas Tabata he seems to be more down the line of you happily do timelines alternate timelines but he always likes the timelines to never be twisted flipped or wrapped up in too much fantasy um he likes his to be more linear even though type zero had a ridiculous number of timelines and we've even started seeing 15 uh, having timelines it seems like those timelines they follow linear paths and i think this is just where we're seeing a uh, creative changes between two directors playing out and this is why why i don't believe it's really tabata versus namura that they hate each other and they kind of glare at each other evilly as to every time they pass uh, <laughs> pass each other in the corridor but i can definitely see namura being upset with plot points that were so important to him and this being one of them uh, but moving on to point number four lupus <laughs> lupus lupus knocks florette florey what a casualty no one of the fake leakers named him yeah <laughs> <laughs> that name's been getting roasted in the conversation. Uh, I don't personally mind it. Uh, he was originally the st uh, Stella's brother, and he was the other chosen one. Now, this is the most exciting part of these rumors, uh, but due to this restructure, I personally hate what they did, but at the same time, I understand. He had to be severely downgraded, and they fused part of him with other members of the Empire, or a other member. Then Ravis was born. Uh, so the other chosen one, it's Namora! It's Nomura. It has Nomura all over it. He loves Chosen One. He loves destinies. He likes intertwining fates and rivals who are connected by stories are woven together. He loves that shit. He eats that up. And I could really see this other member of the Empire, a member one of them, um, probably with General Seferoth. Yeah, there was that General Seferoth, SAF. Um, he was going to be the commander of the um, Niflheim Empire's military. And Ravers really took on that role. So I could imagine that's who he's merged with, uh, if any of this is true, obviously. Uh, one of the plot twists that the game would have is that supposedly all the crystals were dead. But in the last act, you get to know that Lupus had been used to the, uh, the, had been used the ring to get the, Jesus Christ, his crystal powers before it got dead. And yes, Arden fucked every single crystal. And yes, in the final battle, Noctis and Lupus fight against together against Arden in using their ring so hard to read um but thank you for sharing this information if it's legit now it, this is one of the things that in the back of my mind if anyone can tell me in the comments below why this is in the back of my mind but i swear that at one point we heard there were going to be four crystals four crystals in this game uh, and that only the loosest one had remained and i remember hearing that and thinking that was so fnc that was so type zero i mean yeah that is literally the plot of type zero uh, there, there were four crystals, there's only one remains, and the other three nations are up the wazoo, they're fucked, so they have to attack, um, and yeah, if this was the last crystal, and based on FNC lore, if there's a crystal, there's a chosen one, there's a Lassie, there's a guardian of it, there's just, and you can see why Tabitha is saying that parts of that mythos remain, he still says that FNC parts of it remain, uh, and considering that out of all of this, what has come out of it is Noctus is the chosen one of the crystal, and that does the way it goes, um, now whether or not they would have gone up against Arden using their rings, Again, could see it. It would similar to uh, the whole Riku and Sora going up against with their fucking keyblades. It's so Nomura. Back on Versus 13, when there was that fight between the white hooded dude, um, they kind of both brought out their armature weapons. There may be this whole two ring things could have it could have been real but Nomura's team are so upset uh, by that decision particularly Lupus is slash was one of the favorite Nomura characters Ravus is everything Lupus was based on character design personality goals and all except he is not a chosen one and he was treated like shit yep mm-hmm he was. He was. I still say it today. I, I like what they did in episode Ignis. I think they did a bit of justification for Ravus, but they fucked him. They fucked. Ravus is the one who took the pounding in this entire project. His character, his role. He could have been so much more. So, so, so much more. And I would have liked his fate to have been a bit more tied into the game. And I suppose there was at least two more chosen, but I was not told about them. And I just want to say what is a thousand percent official again if there were four, so two more yeah four i knew in the back of my mind i heard that somewhere um and he's saying two more here so implying lupus 
Noctus, <laughs> Lupus, uh, and two more chosen. I love that idea. I think that's great. I mean, I could speculate on who I'd have liked the other two to be. Um, I definitely think maybe Dave Aubenbury would have been one based on what he's doing in the game. Um, as underwhelming as that said, but he's kind of like a bit of a chosen one. Equally, maybe you could have thrown some other curveballs out and on like Aaron Nail or something. I, I don't know, but yeah, or even Corleonus. That would have been even just better. Who, who those other two chosen ones could have been? Um, that could have been special. So number five, Arden. Arden. A character that was respected was Arden. At least a great percentage. He was not only Lucius Calum, but Florette too. I fucking... There is no validity to this, but I fucking knew. Because of the obvious restructure of Tabitha's 15, with just one chosen, they had to make what they did. He was the first chosen, and he just wanted to kill every single crystal. Yeah. So going into this one, I think that there was definitely, there's always been something suspicious to me, and something that has just kind of felt really disconnected from the very start. It's the whole concept of Ardyn being both an oracle and a king. It's not really, it's kind of disconnected, and it's one of those things that feels like it could easily have been born out of something else, because it does doesn't really make much sense the oracles are a bloodline family the power is passed down through a bloodline and the lucis the ring the, the power of the kings is passed down through a bloodline and they're separate and it didn't make any sense and it still doesn't to me today when you when you literally see Ardin in that cosmogen artwork with an oracle but then he himself is an oracle and a healer but you never really explain why so he kind of is becomes an oracle then he's loved so he becomes a king but then they takes his he falls from the crystal's favor and they take it away and then they just pass it over to a new family. It, it doesn't, you've kind of just wedged Arden in the middle, but he has really no connection to the florets. So it, do you know what I mean? Does anyone know what I mean? It doesn't quite fit as snugly a glove as I would like. And the, the whole thing that Arden is doing this all just because he wants to get revenge against his particular line. And they very much pitched him in the Lucis camp. But if Arden had been this kind of middle, if he was both king and healer, and it was from him and his fall that the family divided, that would have been a nicer plot point. I would have run with that. I would have flowed with that. I think it would have also portrayed um, Arden better about bringing the whole thing down. No, rather than just because he, he got betrayed by his brother. I don't know, once, so he's trying to bring this, you know, if it was betrayed by both families and the whole thing in his eyes was just a corrupt shit show, I think it would have even given even better motivations toward Arden wanting just to kill everything. In this case, he's saying a crystal. In this case, I guess it's the gods and astrals and the dawn and to turn everyone to, in, into demons. Uh, but moving on to number six, the gods. Originally summons like Leviathan, Titan, or simply the ones you see in F15. None of them were gods. And like I said, I've just done a summons rant video, and I even did a video, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, where I Said, it was so clear they weren't gods from the start. Uh, the real gods were the ones inside the crystals. So yeah, again, they, they put Bahamut in the crystal. Believable, simple flip. You pulled the summon center stage, you start him in the crystal. S again, the explanation for that wasn't there. And that's the thing, you can always tell with certain plot points, there's certain things. When I read this, even if it's not real, it's, it's so interesting to read simply because even if this person is making it up, you can definitely see the logic of how certain things come through, how certain things evolve. Because when you look at 15, there's so many parts that don't make sense. And you, the only reason they wouldn't make sense is because the writing was unclear from the start. And I think that's the curse with Final Fantasy XV is that the concept, they've just been changed so, so many times. But so what you see in FF15 were just forces of nature, if you want. The Empire was obsessed with their power and they were trying uh, to chase, were trying to chase him to get his powers. Again, because of the restructure, they had to make them gods. I suppose to give them a real importance and a coherence for the story. Seems sensible. Uh, only two points left. So here we go. Number seven travels in time. That was just the other thing they admitted, but at the same time hinted. And part of the story in Versus 13 was traveling in time to try to change events that happens. That was possible because of Umbra. It was an important part. The point of what, uh, that was Noctis not accepting all the tragedies he was living, but at the end he realizes that what destiny wants to happen, it will no matter what you try to change. So kind of, I guess, a Prince of Persia sans a time plot line. <laughs> How that would have worked in, in terms of the story, is he going back to try to save... Uh, uh, Regis, he's trying to go back to save Stella. Um, no, there's no real 
detail on that, but I've heard so many rumors about this. I've even heard stuff about sacrifices and dark rituals, that there was going to be bloodletting. Apparently, if you, you spilt blood or even killed, it allowed you to see visions of, of the dead. Then I heard that it kind of flipped away from that, and it was actually more like a mafia family. Regis and, and the Fluets were going to be like mafias, who had that Romeo and Juliet-esque style of rivalry. Um, but no, apparently there was even going to be an insomnia LAPD where there was going to be a drug called Luna. <laughs> that one, I heard that there was going to be a drug called Luna, and if they took it, it allowed them to go into dream states. And Noctus gets caught by the Insomnia PD on that shit because he, he keeps wanting to see Stella. I've heard all kinds of nuts. But one thing I never heard was where uh, time travel was going to tie it tie into it. And I could definitely see that with our time travel, with what has remained, Umbra doing it. Uh, and I kind of think that the time travel, it, it was a bit wasted in 15 in the sense that if you're going to implement time travel as a plot, you need to do it for more than just so you can go back and do earlier parts of the content. <laughs> I mean, that was so frustrating. Like, you, you give Umbra this plot to actually be that, but then Noctis doesn't use it in any significant way. He doesn't go back to try to undo any mistakes, which in and of itself is absolutely ridiculous. Gentiana has said, here's a ring to go back to the past. Are you not going to question Noctis about going back to save Regis or Luna? Do you not even try? No, it could only be a 20-minute cutscene where you try to go back and change something and then you get thrown out and then Shiva then says you can't do stuff, you can't go back. No, any little tiny thing that tied it actually into the plot in a proper way because it was just ridiculous you just threw in that time element simply so we could go back to the open world part of the game and then when we get to insomnia so that we can go to the Altitia section of the game you added that just simply as basically an access point to the different play styles that you implemented in the game and i feel that's pretty lame and that it once would have been so much more because again, that's it. When, when you've added that in, but there's no real reason for it, it seems like a remnant again. It seems like, you know, Tabitha, when he was saying he's trying to keep as many plot elements in, you can see that some of them have remained to the point where they've even lost their purpose. And that's why they should have just started over, to be honest. Uh, but again, due to the restructure, Versus had certain things that were also little bit convoluted, like the world of dreams and that time travels. Tabitha did not like any of that, as he wanted a direct, no complicated story. And frankly, I can't blame him. If I had to pick up a project from Nomura, like imagine Kingdom Hearts, okay? Put yourself in Tabitha's position, right? Let's say 20% of the kingdom or 25 percent of the kingdom hearts one or two concept on paper as crazy wacky nutty and just bizarre as that game is could any director of pick those concept up and made any kind of head or fucking tails of it no chance that's the problem with verses i always think that people think tabito came on and he just changed it he just changed everything and this kind of disregard that any of the situation in the demand or any of this idea that tabito was able to make the same story that somebody like namura the only person who can finish a namura project is namura so, I, I really don't like the blame that gets put, I, and yeah, it definitely would have been conv more convoluted. I like it, that's why I like Nemo, I like his work, that's why I like a lot of the FNC. I, I'm quite partial to a bit of convoluted, um, and World of Dreams and Time Travels would have been hefty. And I definitely see why Tabata wanted this to be a no complicated story, with those time constraints, and just with the fact that this is coming out to West. This, this stopped being a Japanese Nomura game, the same time it stopped becoming Versus. When it became FF15, when it became Luminous Engine, when it became a PS4 title, it, it changed to being a game that had to appeal to a totally different demographic and, and a much wider audience. And it was the West. It had to appeal to us in the West. So I could see why all of that fat had to be trimmed away. And again, the same way time travel came through in a really weak way, so did World of Dreams. Uh, like some of it came in, it, it tippled in, you know, like the Platinum demo. We went there and, and we saw Carby and we, we collected some stuff and Noctus learned a little the whole thing in the platinum demo of that being a dream and then even when Noctus had that one random dream in the um the Lestalum hotel of the omen trailer they say that the omen trailer is an alternate reality so Noctus somehow during his sleep wasn't having a dream he was in a, having a vision of an alternate reality but how what, what the fuck is going on 15 and I, I, it's only as i've been reading this and really sitting thinking about it that there's so much shit that don't make sense so what is in 15 what is capable the, 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 there is time travel there is alternate realities there is um ghosts so there, there is this idea of an afterlife there is also kind of this idea of family lines lines and fates and, and interwoven fates and, and destiny it, it's like there's so 
many <laughs> omniscient forces at work. And there's probably way more that I'm not even naming off the top. But stuff it. Let's move on to our final point, And that is King's Glaive. Uh, and when I name King's Glaive, I refer not to just the Royal Glaives, but the film. So some of you may know that the Royal Glaives was an idea from Tabata. But what you don't know is the hate Nomura's team have because they do not understand why they first wasted so much resources making the film. But why they also did not put Noctus as the main character instead of Nyx to replace him. They did not understand several decisions they made when they were making uh, FF15. Now, I've gone through the comment section of this, and this point has actually sparked off a bit of a debate. Why they had to do the Kingsclave movie. I, I see it as a little bit of an insult that Nomura would say that he doesn't understand why they made it the film. Like, why waste the resource? Why do it? They did it because of you, Nomura. Like, if this is true, I think this is Nomura being pretty douchebaggy because the whole reason why they put King's Glaive in is because Tabata was trying his best to honor a part of the story that you had prolifically shown off more than anyone else and had got the hopes and desires to see it uh, in the hearts and minds of fan and that was the insomnia invasion most of the versus trailers you showed were that most of the combat system you showed was during that you fleshed out the insomnia invasion more than anything you even made incredible and I mean I still to this day those versus is cinematics of the Noctus going up and stabbing people in the blood. One of the best. I've never been so hyped off the trailer when I saw that. Booger me! Um, and, and you even yourself said, uh, and, and it's been known for a while, that you was trying to make this into a trilogy, Nomura, and that you made concepts for as big as a trilogy, but that you were having to desperately reconcept all of your ideas because you were trying to trim it down, and that's when it started losing direction. And I believe that fully. There was so much fat to be cut away with this that I really don't blame Tan for having to allocate that portion um, that was because he had no choice to do it because fans were so eager for it he was forced into putting it in and yeah you could say where well, he could have put it in the game and they could have had Noctus do it but I really don't think the movie would have worked if it had been Noctus not at all uh, now let's say if they did put Noctus in instead of Nyx that would have made no sense because think about it the jumping off point at the start of the game would be straight from tragedy immediately and you would have to have seen it that that's the reason why they made Nyx because Kingsclave had to be self-contained. And 15 had to be built in the potential and likely option that not everyone had seen the movie. So they couldn't have put too much important stuff in the movie that if anyone hadn't have seen it. And that's the thing, maybe if they did put Noctus in as Nyx, if he was in the Kingsclave movie, uh, that would only work if you forced, and I mean forced, the player to watch the movie before they played the game. Because it wouldn't make sense. I mean, let's think if Noctus had gone through all of that, what Nyx had gone His father dying, his city burning, if he'd have put on the ring and, and used the magic to have escaped it. Uh, going into the game, they would have been so much angst. Like, the characters would have been coming in hot or on the emotion meter, and unless you played the movie, you wouldn't know what it was for. And that's the thing, with the game, the characters kind of need to be a blank slate. The tragedy needs to happen in that game. Is yada yada, you get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I don't like that if that is true. I think Nomura's being a bit unfair, because he and his team, uh, that's the thing, even if they are his team and Tabitha's team, they have to understand that they tied business divisions to hands in certain ways, conceptually. Without a doubt, they, they tied their hands up and forced them to do certain things. And that's it. So that's all I know. And I hope you guys appreciate and let it go. My conclusion is one. Maybe there are people that prefer what Tabitha did, or maybe you guys prefer Nomura's vision. The real point for me is not about being better or worse. It's about respecting the original idea. You can say he partially did things, but things were so important for Nomura, they were thrown and Tabitha did a good job. Maybe respecting more things that you than you imagine. Imagine. God damn right. But he eliminated little details that were that details that give magic to a title like this. I think this summarizes it perfectly. In the company, the Nomura's team can uh, not see Tabitha's and vice versa. The company are trying to hide that and the official concepts for 15 2013 you saw last year were pre-meditally calculated to fool people to think that there were barely any difference with Tabitha's vision. I think that's all. Thank you so much, everyone. And a million thanks to Liam Blade. And I think that's about the best, regardless of whether it's true. Uh, that's just the best explanation we're going to have on it. You simply can't take something like Final Fantasy that is so, so revered 
for its story that is put on such a pedestal where its tonality, its themes and the consistency of them and the characters and the consistency in their development. Consistency is so important and having a really tight knit story that isn't having to build out of the ashes of something else. Uh, that is so important. I think that's obviously what's gone wrong here. And I, I do definitely think that 15 has been handled like a nightmare. They And I, I admire them for trying to keep so much of it under wraps. They tried to keep it all on the low low. They tried to keep fans convinced that things weren't being cut and changed and constantly along the way because you know they never want fans to know that it's going to be delayed. You know then they were never going to tell us how bad it was. Oh and quickly before we sign this video out I'm just looking uh, supposedly this picture was data mined from the game. So supposedly this does come from 15. That definitely looks like a Grim Reaper handing down what could be the ring. Uh, so maybe the Etro ring really did come. It does seem like a Shinigami blessing, an important figure. Yeah, there is a lot going down. I will leave a link to this discussion. A lot of people are answering uh, their opinions about those different points, uh, the validity of them. Get in on the conversation, guys. Uh, the concept changes from Ravus between Lupus. What seems plausible, unplausible, where the person got their information. If you care about Versus 15 and you're just interested, join the discussion, get in there. But the thing, again, like I said, that just makes me feel this, it has a little bit more validity to it, despite despite the poor uh, the poor spelling. It is that they're, they're saying that uh, Versus had that magic, that 15, in a way, did distort, corrupt, and ruin certain elements, or had them so dragged from their cradle up that was originally Nomura's brain. To, uh, personally, I'm going to say I like, I like this. I like the ideas of dreams fading with reality, that not just didn't know what was real and that this character Stella was going to be reappearing to him. I would have liked it to go some of those more dark, magical, Nomura-like places. Um, but I'll go a few posts down, like Genova here saying, um, I'm happy a lot of the fat was trimmed. Time travel is a terrible plot device and that some of Nomura's uh, writing is lazy and that they don't like some of his confusing concepts um, and storytelling methods. You know, it's, it's all personal taste, but I think reading the two, I would have liked some of that versus magic. I feel like 15 needed to step a little bit more into that, uh, that fantasy because the elements are there like the time travel again the time travel the dreams they just needed to go further because they didn't seem like they were integral to the plot they would just seem like they were there for convenience or just left in as a tribute to something that essentially died a long long time ago and that's the point it has died and that's why I like more than anything despite this person saying that it's the versus magic they're saying that the versus 15 is bullshit it's fake and that the fan base has got the Delusions about what verses were going to be 15 so deeply embedded that they've started becoming rival camps and, and they don't even know what they're arguing about. So the whole thing could have been so much more similar than we're thinking. But there we go, ladies and gentle peasants. That's the lot. Let me know what you think uh, in the comment section below. How plausible does it sound to you? How many of these concepts would you have liked in the game? See you guys on the next video. And I've also seen that there is some very exciting new comrades. Um, Comrades content coming out soon, which I hope to be covering. So do the whole subscribe and liking and all that good stuff. Because frankly, with this game, uh, this game within itself is a Final Fantasy within a Final Fantasy that will never be final. Kubo!